everyone, Shirtlad here, and in the seventh episode of the Overlay Bar, we've got Kenzie Key in the guest chair. What's going on, babies? Yeah, so, uh, if, uh, if you'd like to, could you, uh, sum up what you do on your channel? Alright, so, my name's Kenzie Kay. I do, um, mostly gaming content with a focus on comedy, uh, humor, uh, toilet humor, all that shit. <laughs> uh, focused on, you know... Modern video games, old video games, I cover everything. Mostly Gundam, but there's other shit too. Um, and uh, Shirt Lad hit me up. He wanted to, you know, talk to me for his for his little cute little podcast. And I was I was down. I wanted to I wanted to talk. And yeah, I, I'm really excited to do this. <laughs> like this is the first like this is the first time that me and him have been talking voice to voice, face to face, <laughs> nuts to nuts. <laughs> And I am, and I am, I'm ready to, I'm ready to slap. <laughs> uh, glad to have you here. So, um, I know, um, let's see, what would be a good, uh, good way to kick it off? You know, funnily enough, the, the first video that kind of got your channel in my spotlight was the new Gundam Break review. I think, I think that's the... This is a big breakout hit that a lot of uh, yeah, people I think started a lot doing. of people. Yeah, I think a lot of people. That was their first like virgin Kenzie K experience. Was the uh, the new Gundam Breaker video that I I wish I could be more proud of because my mic was shit back then. <laughs> but you know, it was ah, it was right. it was me call it was me calling new Gundam Breaker good. So I'm sure <laughs> that I'm sure that people wanted to see what that was all about. Gun new Gundam Breaker good. What <laughs> you know yeah. I uh. Funnily enough, it was, uh, I, uh, I watched it, like, about a, uh, either a month after I got a copy of New Gun Breaker, or, a, like, half a week before. But, mm -hmm. here's the thing, I, uh, like, when I got my copy, I, uh, I was like, oh, surely there must be a Gundam game on Steam, I don't know this, uh, Cross race things. Uh, I uh, I wasn't that, uh, that much into G Gen games at the time, so I was, I was like, okay, this is called Gundam. Sure, it must be fun. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I suppose I was looking for uh, something to kind of justify the buyer's remorse. <laughs> and then you watched the cross race video. No, I actually didn't. Like for for a pretty long time, like I. I think I watched uh, the MS Saga one before that, oh, yeah. even the Maxi Boost ones. And uh, yeah, I went. I think I went to that one after that. But at that point, <clears throat> I've already played uh, G Generation Genesis. And of course, like, <clears throat> look over the years, I've. I think I've played almost all of the G Generation games, like, at this point. With uh, just a couple exceptions, I mean. The only ones that I haven't played are SD Gundam G Generation Neo and SD Gundam G Generation Seed, on top of the SD Gundam G Generation, the A typing game for old PCs that can't be tracked down anywhere, at least as far as I know. <clears throat> yeah. I'm like, are all those games like way similar to each other? Like, I, I assume you play one, you play them all. Oh, it's uh, actually that's a good question, cause uh, it's uh, like if you're going from uh. G Generation Spirits or G Generation World uh, for the PS2, uh, or you know from uh, the duo of Overworld and G Generation World uh, from the PSP to the modern ones like as stated uh, Cross Race or uh, Genesis, <coughs> uh, you're just gonna find that the new ones are just more of the uh, I guess more of the old but uh, with a little more polish. Sometimes with less mobile suits, sometimes with more mobile suits. I suppose in, in that case it depends, but aside from some quality of life improvements, I suppose those uh, those six don't particularly, uh, I guess, divert from uh, the general modern day GGN formula. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I was gonna ask because um, I've never heard of G Generation World at all. Is it anything uh, familiar? Or you know, similar to the hit game FNAF World uh, for the PC. <laughs> uh, not really, but uh, 
<laughs> if I if I may briefly resume the GGN tangent, mm -hmm. I suppose the best way to put it would be that uh, like there's definitely some differences between the between between the various games. Like uh, if uh, if you really want to get all sorts of uh, niche, mainly UC mobile suits, then like. SD Gundam G Generation F for the original PlayStation is your go-to stop. Like that, that thing has all sorts of stuff, all sorts of niche stuff, all the oh, way yeah. up to stuff from like the year 2000. So you can you have the White Dingo stuff. You have uh, you have stuff from Crossbone, even all the nooks and crannies, uh, like uh, subflight systems, like those uh, old style. Uh, G Gen games, they definitely, uh, it definitely tends to have uh, like simpler sprites, uh, sprite animations. Some of the like setups and the menus, they are, I guess, less streamlined, but they do have a whole lot of features. Like the, I think G Generation Zero and F, they do let you put the mobile doll system into a mobile suit and then it runs autonomously, which I find mm. funny. But yeah, the, the, the that bunch is very feature rich, and then of course you've got the the bunch that usually the handhelds have, like you know the Game Boy Advance and the Wonder Swan. You know, G Generation Advance, Gator Beat, Gator Beat Two, and the Mono Eye Gundams. Those four. <coughs> Hold up. Oh, yeah, four. <laughs> yeah, those silly Mono Eyes. Like the that one. Uh, well, uh, those. They have a, uh, I guess a bit of a crossover plotline with all sorts of like AU stuff, UC stuff colliding, <clears throat> and like one uh, one downside to them is that their rosters aren't as big as uh, one would want them to be, but uh, they do have some uh, something endearing about them. They do have a kind of slightly different capture system. Where you just have to surround the unit and then pummel it to the point where you know you can capture it. Then, of course, uh, you get a whole lot of uh, game original stuff like the gym juggler, the Ziscade, the Despada, things of that nature. On top of being, on top of those games being, I think much closer to a uh, to a game like Fire Emblem in a lot of ways. Mm, yeah, they do sound very similar. They they play pretty similarly too. Well, yeah, there's. Uh... <laughs> like I think I've actually I think I made that that illusion in the um in the cross race video that there it's basically Fire Emblem, except the Fire Emblem characters are all wearing like you know, like mobile armor. <laughs> I uh, I think that in some cases that's a very apt comparison. In some, I find that probably have to squint that that game a bit harder to kind of make it fit but yeah for the oh, most no. part I mean, it fire, is I mean, the difference is fire emblem is very boring and not very entertaining <laughs> at all and you know at least gundam has a personality you know oh dang that's that's pretty scathing i haven't played any of the fire emblem games <laughs> oh good lord uh just a just just a heads up i <laughs> i only halfway believe that no like i I really didn't like. I know what they play like. I've seen uh, uh, gameplays of them. Like they, they, they are great strategies with some RPG elements and like. Uh, I'd say that uh, as stated, the uh, the handheld ones are definitely closer to that style of stuff. Definitely with the unit stacking and such. They definitely seem like something fun, but I I know myself well enough to the point where yeah I, I must not touch these. I must not open these. Otherwise, my productivity is gonna take a complete no staff. Because yeah. this... that's that's the hard thing to do. Like some of these games are really really addictive. That's how I am with Near Automata. Like, oh, I got a day off. Cool. Time to spend it on fishing and Android ass. <laughs> I know, right. <laughs> God, dude, I can't. I can't even begin to tell you. Like, 
the first time I discovered Nier Automata, like, I like my life was taken over by it. <laughs> like that's the problem. That's why I can't make a video on it. Cause when I make when I make a video on a particular topic, like I literally will like burn out and never play the game again. I thought that's because you know, uh, when it comes to uh, again videos made, you know, it usually involves a whole lot of recording, a whole lot of meticulousness. Meticulousness, yeah. like for that, for that intro. Yeah, you just, you for... just have to spend a lot of time. You just have to spend a lot of time with the with the thing, with the subject of the video. You have to spend a lot of time with it. And as humans, like we get really, you know, we get really bored when we spend a lot of time on one particular thing in a really short amount of time. I'd say so it depends, like, but yeah. Well, yeah, it does depend. But it's it's one of those things where it's like you like when you spend more time with a certain thing and then you put it out and then the project is complete. It's almost like a a sense of completionism. Like you're you're done with the product uh, in in some cases, not all. Some people aren't like that, but I'm I'm like that. Uh, it's like I I finished it like like with the like with the gotcha games. Like I'm I'm done. I'm, I'm done with them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, it's that's... it's like that. It's like that meme with like the Grim Reaper, and he's like going into different doors, <laughs> and like just just slaughtering everything. It's like that's how I feel whenever I make like a video about any of those. <laughs> it's like I'm I'm done with them, and it, it kind of happened with Gundam too. The only time, the only Gundam game I still play like to this day really is Gundam Breaker Three, and that's gonna change when Gundam Breaker Four comes out. So it it is what it is, I suppose. <laughs> Yeah, you know, uh, I'd say a lot of uh, a large amount of uh, the videos you make about games. I think a really big uh, upside to them is like the the fact that it it really is a lo in a lot of ways a bit of a like look into the new player experience. Yeah, right. I like it's see, and that's the thing. Like I did talk about that. It's like somebody said that. Somebody said that because you know I'm I'm Gundam Battle Operation 2's biggest hater. <laughs> like, like it takes me, like it takes me everything in my power not to like say something snarky and dumb when when there's a post that comes out about it. Because like it's just I don't know I just I just hate it. It's like I see red whenever I whenever somebody posts about Gundam Battle Operation 2, but you know, I back up a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, it's like somebody said that my video on it was like. Like this, this video see, feels like it's from a new player perspective, which can be a good or a bad thing. It's like, what does that even mean? It's like I haven't played it before. Like, it's like, what do I have to be like a hundred hours like a rank in this just to like have an opinion? And like, no, I don't think anybody should be like that. I think the, I don't think uh, there's much wrong with like GBO two itself. It definitely has its quirks, but it. At the same time, it does have this uh, have a bit of a problem, just you know, being uh, upfront with the players, like what what they're supposed to expect from certain units. That's probably a good way to put it, because uh, you know, in the, in the tutorial, they don't tell you about the balancers, the maneuver armor, force injectors, those skills. But you know, yeah. once you once you know about those, once you have a like decent I guess uh, like once you get a feel for certain units it uh, it definitely runs much better but uh, yeah it uh, it does have this it does have a bit of a hump to it which yeah, one uh, has to cross and it's not for everyone like, uh, see and that's see <laughs> that's the thing dude uh, it's like I I think I've gotten better at GBO2 than I had any right to during that era because it's not like i just like sucked at it for a while and was like okay yeah this sucks it's like i learned i went to the tutorial <laughs> like i i learned its ways i read its i read its signs but it's like you know people don't know that and it's like and that's the thing it's like you know some people out there genuinely do feel like if you aren't like the the highest rank knowing everything it's like it's because you can do that with a single player game right like you can kind of you know like play it for a little bit and if it's just not meshing with you then it's just not meshing with you then you can get out and then you don't lose anything but it's like with a game like gun battle operation 2 and it's the same thing like like league of legends overwatch those kinds of things even though nobody plays overwatch anymore <laughs> like it's like 
you it's like you can't spend too much time with the game because then it becomes like a sunk cost fallacy in my opinion where yeah you could drop it but then you know people on the internet i mean you know people on the internet aren't real um <laughs> but it's like they they definitely have this like oh wait but you didn't do this or but you didn't do that like oh but you didn't learn this weird niche mechanic that automatically makes everything better it doesn't by the way or it's like like you know it's like it's just one of those things you know people are staunch defenders of uh of that kind of you know that that kind of gameplay experience where you got to learn 100% of everything just to come to the conclusion that yeah this this isn't all that i don't look i don't particularly think it's that bad but at the same time yes the uh, look the i think your take on gbo2 would be my take on league Oh yeah, I'm but, like, uh, like, dude, I think League is terrible, and I cannot stop playing it. Fortunately, I have, uh, I have, I have dropped that habit. But, uh, yeah, when it comes to GBO2, I am either suffering from, uh, from a heavy case of Stockholm syndrome, because <laughs> I'm actually yeah, that's, having that's fun. Yeah, that's probably it. But, yeah, I'd get that checked out. Honestly. And I like, <laughs> and I like to paint my Giradoga blue, so that I can uh, play as. Best girl resin. I mean, what? <laughs> uh, and like this, there's a handful of units that I find genuinely enjoyable, like the Bjarland and the Mephas, and all sorts of I silly think, stuff. I think the Drossy is fun. Like, I think the Drossy is pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> like that's, that's about it, it. Yeah, it is. One stun, one crappy build stun, like barely some part build stun, and it's machine gun, and of course the big poke. Yeah, you know what? I think I should make it pretty clear. Like, I don't, I don't hate GBO two. Like, I do, but I don't. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I kind of get I, it. I think, I think there's, I think there's a value to any game that like has a community, right? Like, I don't, like, I don't hate, like, I don't hate the game. Like, I don't even hate the players either. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> oh, yeah, I do, but I don't. <laughs> like, I do, yeah, I do, but I don't. You know what I'm saying? It's like, but at the same time, like, I think there's absolutely value to it. I think there is something to learn. It's just that, you know, I, I just think, like, Maxi Boost kind of, like, like got it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think, it's, uh... it's fast, it's competitive, there's there's niche mechanics that make it easier to play at a higher level. There's definitely... Like... I'd say that uh, when it comes to... I'd say Maker Games in general, it's that, you know, people usually have a specific uh, field that they prefer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's either slow and clunky or fast and anime. That that's what I've kind of noticed yeah. about Gundam in particular. It's like it's two camps. It's and, either and they both hate or each other. Warframe, basically. Yes, yes, that's, that's... and they both both sides hate each other. Like it's like a, <laughs> it's like it's like a war. It's like a civil war between the fast boys and the slow boys, and it's like obviously I'm on the fast boys side because I mean I don't know like if you're not first you're last. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> It's like, I just, I, me personally, I don't know, maybe you can offer a defense for this because I don't think I've ever talked to anyone about this. So, so what side are you on? Are you on slow boys or fast boys? Uh, well, let's just say that, okay, if, uh, if, uh, like the scale was like a physical line, if somebody put a highly autistic, uh, metronome there and, uh, <laughs> flicked it, I'd, uh, I'd be the tip of the, whatchamacallit, on top of that metronome stick. Just going back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> so you just kind of... So, I mean, you just probably just like Gundam if it's good. Like, it doesn't really matter. Like, there's, uh, there's certain games that I uh, don't really like the feel of, but I kind of understand why people like it. Oh, yeah, true. I and mean, I don't I don't like when things are uh, a bit too floaty, which, uh, it's, uh, like... It's one of the things that kind of initially soured me on encounters in space. Then again, I played that thing on keyboard, and that was a nightmare. So maybe yeah, if I, I actually try and had control. to revisit that game. But uh, I don't know. Like there's there's clunkier games that I clunkier Gundam games that I do play, like uh, Lost War Chronicles and uh, well. Uh, when it comes to making stuff at large, I also played the the Vodum's PS2 game. That one was definitely fun. 
even though mm-hmm. sometimes like there's there's definitely certain enemies that can kind of bullshit the system <laughs> to which you kind of have to uh, find a workaround yourself, and <laughs> it definitely gets gets a tad goofy. But I think those are fun. I think that there's some uh, there's some there's definitely some value in both. I guess uh, if you want a good middle ground between like uh, weighty and uh, and floaty, I suppose a uh, a great uh, Gundam game series uh, for you to check out would be the Gundam Bell series. It is in Japanese, however. Mm-hmm. Uh, like if you start with Gundam Assault Survive, that one has an English patch, and uh, like the controls in general aren't that hard to figure out. It just gets like my only gripe with that game is that it does get a bit grindy if you want to go for a full hundred percent. Which okay, let me open uh, open up my copy. Just don't mm-hmm. mind me. Just uh, <laughs> don't get that silly. But uh, here's the units that I have yet to get. Like, all I need to complete my current roster would be the Xe Gundam, the Penelope, the Victory Two Gundam, the Victory Two Gundam Assault Buster, uh, the the Freedom Meteor, Justice Gundam, Justice Gundam Meteor, Gen Flag, Alvatore, the Small version of the Golden Boy from Double O, Gin Armor, Exia, Gin Armor, uh, Dynamis. No, I have that one. Uh, the Curious Gundam, the Virtue Gundam, and uh, the other two Throne Gundams. But I have the rest of those. Mm. But like the, the roster size of that one is pretty big, like 210 units. Yeah, that is a lot. That Featuring is... stuff from C Double O, even Dante from Devil May Cry. I just I'm like, kidding. I was just about to say, and Dante from the Devil May Cry series, <laughs> and Knuckles, <laughs> and Knuckles, and Knuckles. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's more. That's more than hell, dude. It, God, remember the days where like Gundam, Gundam Dynasty Warriors Gundam Three was coming out and like fifty units was like insane for that series. Some rookie numbers. <laughs> I'm like that roster was big back in the day. It's also I. Uh, I'm still a bit hesitant on getting the SD Gundam Battle Alliance you know, lack of units. Because, look, there's no egg guys. <laughs> I risked my yeah, case. That's, I'm like. <laughs> I'm like that. I think that game's more worth it for the experience rather than like the uh like the roster. Yeah, I think so. like they like they it's it's cute. It's funny. I, I think that's. I just I do I definitely do think that I play Gundam games for slightly different reasons than people do. Uh, I like I like seeing funny, cute like characters on screen. And like oh yeah, number like, one. Oh yeah, it's it, <laughs> number oh, yeah, one. It's Loran amazing. simp. <laughs> I mean, what? Oh yeah, <laughs> they need to make a turn a. They need to make a turn a game right now. That's like that's in the mainstream and it plays like Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm. Why Naruto? No, <laughs> I'm gonna fight you on the last one. You don't want it. You don't want it to play like an anime arena fighter. You know what? How about we make it a uh, jo- uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Heritage for the Future cl- a clone Rude. with the turn a yes. roster. Yes, now that I can agree with. Of course, there will be like two that. cheese characters. Not saying Absolutely. which ones, but I, I would become the God's strongest uh, bandit <laughs> defender. I mean, I'm only gonna be playing one character, so it don't even matter for me. <laughs> like Loran could literally be a fucking like like a D tier character still playing them. <laughs> I, I just I don't know. I, I feel so strongly about that. It's insane. Like we we do need a turn A exclusive game it's like they make it's like they'll make every gundam game under the sun and it'll have granddaddy in it and it'll have all these other like insanely popular units but then it's like i don't know turn a is like turn a is no different than like waluigi in like a mario sports game it's like it's like give give loran the spotlight that he so desperately deserves <laughs> oh god the notion like of... not not saying that i particularly care gundam. for waluigi but <laughs> What have you done? You have put that image into my mind, no? 
<laughs> now, now I can't shake the like image of like the turn eight being a Luigi. Yeah. <laughs> you know, with his mustache. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh lord. <laughs> That's that was completely shit. unintentional too. I didn't even draw the correlation. Uh, you also said that the, your other, uh, I think, it, uh, in uh, the Dynasty Warriors uh, Gundam review, at least one of them, you did bring up the Hyakushik as well. Yes, that, was... that, that is the like the first, my first exposure to um, Gundam as a whole was my friend. Uh, I called him KD. Um, yeah, it was like he was, he just kept going on and on about the Hyakushiki. And I was like, what the fuck is that, dude? <laughs> like, what, like, what is, what are these words? And so he shows me and it's like this, this beautiful golden freaking robot looking thing. And I was like, this thing looks awesome. And then he showed me what the fuck it does. It's like the fuck, it's like, it's doing what martial arts and shit like that. <laughs> it's like hand to hand. And it like, and it's just out of nowhere. It just has this fucking massive cannon, and I'm just like, dude, this is like the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. It's like I just, I don't know. It's like the Hyakushiki. Like if it weren't turn A, like it would be the Hyakushiki. It's like aside from like, it's like aside from the sexual awakening I got from Lorenz saying, <laughs> I absolutely like it. It would have been Quattro Bagina if it weren't. So I'm honestly, I'm honestly super happy about. Like getting introduced to Hyakushiki first because that was my uh, that was my my you know my door into having my life ruined. <laughs> yeah, that, that's my that's my Gundam story. I love the way you introduced it. <laughs> See this 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 ruined my life. That smile. It all began with that damn smile. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes i just dude i when i say i used to be so like doe-eyed and like hopeful for the future of like uh my future as a gundam fan it's like and then it all comes crashing down oh, with, yeah. with turn a at the top of the hill <laughs> like burning my hopes and dreams with a <laughs> with a match it's a bit of the... and i say and i say thank you loran it's kind of like the nature of uh, the licensed anime titles in general like, like for better or worse they tend to be a mixed bag i like some of the clankier stuff as well but i know it's not for uh it's not for everyone yeah like i won't i won't hate on people for liking the clunky stuff it's just that like they're probably some of the most annoying people to get hate comments from because I can only I can only speak on I can only really speak on Gundam from a content creator perspective, honestly. <laughs> so my opinions may be a little bit uh, a little bit out there. Yeah, mileage may vary. Uh, yes, mileage say. definitely may vary. Yes, uh, but it's like, dude, the the people who like the clunky Gundam games, dude, they are they are <laughs> like tribal, they are territorial, dude. Like I've like I've never been threatened or anything, but I've <laughs> definitely but I've definitely like they just well you know so it's like. Because there are, there have been clunkers that I liked, right? Like I, I liked, well, you know, Federation versus Zeon. That one's not necessarily clunky. It's just a little heavier than typically. But something like Journey to Jabro, right? Yeah, Journey to Jabro. <laughs> but you know, there is a, there is a like, whenever I see comments about it that people actually like it. Typically, it's like, oh, I'm so nostalgic for this game, or like. Oh, I miss this game so much. It was my childhood, but it's like it doesn't it doesn't hold up. But you never see anyone saying that it holds up, you know. So I feel like a lot of these clunkers are like like they get the nostalgia buff. Like they like people really really like them because they really really like them as a kid, you know, before their frontal lobes developed. So it's like they so they never like so they don't so they're not used to better. I'd say that, but it's like hmm. I think uh, I think there's definitely some appeal to like the eccentricities <laughs> of like s certain older games like i i wouldn't uh i wouldn't make it as clear cut with the like it it gets some merit points just because it's older because i guess there's been newer games that uh that shit a bit there's definitely some really really smooth uh older games like a few minutes later but yeah what else what else did you have on the uh on the docket yeah, definitely like uh, 
I definitely wanted to uh, pick your brain about, you know, uh, content creation stuff. Because, you know, sure. I, uh, I definitely would consider myself, like, you know, someone who, like, makes stuff, but I don't, I don't particularly look at the stuff I make from, like, the perspective of someone who, like, runs a channel to to get numbers, so I, uh, like, so, some some stuff definitely, like, flies over me, like, I know that there's, like, all these, like, all that search, the search engine optimization stuff, mm -hmm. <laughs> but, yeah, but, Okay, enough of me being around the bush. Is uh yeah, what what you got? I don't know, like uh, what's uh, I guess uh, I suppose like what's uh, what's next on the on the Kinsey agenda on the channel? What shall be uh, the next port you uh, shall send next, to? Next is Elden Ring. Um, I am I'm tackling the DLC and the rest of the Souls games with it. So it's a big it's a big project. Um. Because, you know, that's that's what you have to do as a variety content creator. Well, I'm a budding variety <laughs> content creator. <laughs> budding. It's like, so, I, you know, I've been doing this for a few years, but it's like, you know, I, I'm still what you would call relatively very, 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 very small. Uh, my community is pretty active. I, I, I'm very happy with the community that I've cultivated, but I am still a very small person. So I guess you could consider me in the space of I am trying to get numbers and grow and get subscribers that actively watch me for me and not for the old Gundam videos I made four years ago. <laughs> uh, so it's it's a transitional period for sure. And as a variety content creator, you have to cover things at a faster pace uh, than usual. And they have to be modern and you have to get your opinion out there first for the vultures to pick at, right? Um, and it sounds And it sounds kind of... You know, it sounds kind of like, you know, predatory. Definitely sounds um, like something that, uh, it will, you know. Like, does it sound fun? No. But it definitely is fun if that's your passion for it. Because uh, so, cause your, cause your channel, like right now, if I had to boil it down to one specific thing, if I had to boil it down, but you do plenty of other things. So I'm not boiling it down to, you know, demean whatever work you Look, do or I, anything I, like I, that. I, uh, I do, like, I like your stuff a lot. Um... I would say that you do you provide resources for people who want to get into um, hyper niche Gundam games. Yeah. Like those are usually your heavy hitters, right? For the most part, I sometimes I just cover some stuff for fun. Sometimes I make shit post edits. Like I, uh... Yeah, like you, like completely like completely like talking about the editing. The editing in your stuff is great. Uh, I will say that. Like regardless of what you make, your editing is great. Um, I do like it. Um, it. It definitely is more. F it definitely does appeal to me because I love fucking like you know like cocaine editing. <laughs> like I love cocaine editing. I love like like fast paced edits and things like that. So I do like that. Oh. Like, that's a huge strength. When I hear something funny, what's up? Here's the thing. I'm editing on a program called VSDC Free Video Editor. It is a. Uh... Oh, wait, let me look that up real quick. I was editing on this, and I still am editing on this, for give or take two years. And I just found out that uh, going by the general consensus of people who work uh, who work with like free editing software, <laughs> this was like the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, holy I'm like, shit! What I hear about now is uh, DaVinci Resolve. Yeah, but I think that one has its own. Gaps and gimmicks as well. Like if I were to, uh, if I want to, I guess, branch out to uh, to another one, I'd I think I'd take I'd take a crack at the Caden Life thing since that's uh, that one's pretty feature rich. But at the same time, you know, I'll get there when I get there, which means maybe a couple more years, maybe a couple more months, depending on my schedule. Since, I mean, whatever I'm in with is fine enough as is. I mean, I, I make my uh, thumbnails and paint. That's anything to go by. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. That... Well, that's one thing I will say. Because um, this is something that I... This is something that I struggle with now. Uh, trying to learn new stuff. If you can learn new stuff, uh, I would say at least 
try, you know, because <laughs> it, it will be difficult. I'm not saying that, like, you have to switch up because, you know, if you're used to what you're used to, then that's fine. If it works for you, if your workflow is good with it, that's that's totally fine. Do what you got to do, man. Uh, I, but it's like if you want to learn a new software and if you feel like it's a little bit difficult, but you know it'll be better for, like, the crazy stuff you want to do, I would 100% learn it. Cause right now I'm like pretty much chained to Vegas <laughs> and I make, and I do everything in Vegas and I like, I do thumbnails, everything. And like, I, I want to learn DaVinci and I want to learn uh paint.net so I can make better thumbnails in general. And it's tough. It's really tough because these, <laughs> these things are different. And because I've been using Vegas for going on, like since 2013, like the, 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 the controls for everything else is just so foreign. So I would be like, if you've only been doing it for a couple of years and you want to branch out and do more crazy stuff, I, I highly recommend it. Um, the earlier, the better, because especially if it helps you improve. I think that because there's always room for improvement on everything. Definitely. I think that mm -hmm. at least UI wise, I'm too far gone. Like I can't. <laughs> That's the thing about like all of the editor UIs. They uh. Some of them are uh, fairly standardized, and some of them are like, you know what, we're going to be experimental, and then they kind of, <laughs> and they make it way too gimmicky. Yeah. Like, I, in that regard, I do think uh, DaVinci Resolve is probably, like, the best thing out there right now for free video editing. Like, the best. Because it's, like, it's, it's really, it's really feature-rich. It probably has it has really more options than Vegas does, without a lot of the lag. It lets you optimize footage and everything. I I think it's great, um, and you know completely free. That's nice. It it yeah it's it's great. I'm I'm trying to learn it. Um, if I if I can't learn it soon, then I'll learn it at some point. But uh, that that one has been a pretty proven. Like uh, a lot of creators I talk to, uh, they I know. they use it. Like, I know they, a lot of people swear by DaVinci. But, you know, what keeps bugging me is that they doesn't have the big red trim button that I have on the VSDC. Yeah, that's the problem. Like, that's another thing. It's like, you, it's just different. Like, all the hotkeys are different. That's the one thing I have to get used to, is that all of the little cutesy things that Vegas has, DaVinci doesn't really have it. Or if it does, it has it in a different way. So I just have to, like, oh, yeah. get used to it. And then it's like... Oh no! Why they put the pause bar there? Why is it not up? Why is it <laughs> right? Why doesn't out? it immediately like? Why doesn't the time code immediately start at zero? <laughs> yeah, things of that nature. Yeah, I, uh, I really enjoy like a lot of the, a lot of the videos you make. Like you have a really, really good ban. You have a very good banter. Uh, and those like uh, <laughs> I really like that. But in, uh, I think it was either Genshin or the Weathering Waves video where you were like, oh yeah, this is like one of those games, at least worldwide, where, you know, you get to explore, you get to climb around, it kind of awakens that exploration gene. Oh. <laughs> <A> monkey. <laughs> but not the 1950s yeah. one. And then you just switch it was switch to the camera. Yeah, you turn around and you smugly proclaim. I can make that joke. <laughs> Whenever I have a game with this degree of freedom, I kind of get this monkey gene. No, not the 1950s definition. I'm allowed to make that joke. <laughs> yeah, I, I do love my edgy humor. Yeah, like... I just, I don't know. That's a part of me that'll never die, I'm afraid. That, I, I that just, is I perfectly love... fine. I'm, I'm <laughs> like, there for it. it. Like, <laughs> look, I... Like outside of I mean nobody will ever know. I mean nobody will ever know that I said the N word with a hard R in the uh in the in the uh, mass builder video. Nobody will ever know cuz it's censored, but uh yeah, that's funny. I, I, but that was but that's that that was that was a long time ago. <laughs> I do get up to silliness. <laughs> you you do you do engage in a little bit of silliness. Oh, I sure do. Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, I feel like I feel like everyone does, right? It's like you know, I, I would rather people not, you know, like if they're, well, I mean, you know, certain content creators, they have to like, you know, make make that bag, you know. Yeah, they have but to. I, uh, I, in a perfect get... world, I would like for I would like if people were able to just, you know, be themselves, like not even just if they're like edgy, but like just not having to hide parts of them, you know, like when they're trying to be funny, oh, when yeah, they're trying to be like, like... interesting. 
I think that, like, one of the biggest casualties in the whole algorithm chase that a lot of people on YouTube get into is is this, I guess, death of authenticity. Like, yeah, like, like you have to, like you have to perform. It's like I get that you have to perform like a little bit, like when you get behind the microphone and when you get on camera. Like I get that, but it's like you don't. But you're like, if there's one thing that I want to preserve through any videos I make is that I want it to be me, but an exaggerated version of me, but it's still me at the core. It's definitely, I definitely get that vibe. Like, uh, yeah, it's like, I, like, I don't want to hide myself because then, like, what the fuck? Like, what if my DMs get leaked and then people <laughs> act like they didn't see it coming? It's like, well, no, I, I said that. <laughs> uh, same here. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I don't, like, I don't care about, like, I don't care about acting for people who probably wouldn't like me in the first place, you know? Yeah. So. It's like, does that kind of stuff stunt growth? Probably, but, you know, people get audiences all the time off of being, like, themselves and being authentic. Yeah, pretty much. So, it's also funny yeah, that, it. you know, with how uh, a lot of the YouTube fad come and go, you you pretty much get, like, errors of uh, people trying to, I guess, uh, make it big. They try to make it to the top 20%, but... Yeah, they certainly they re uh, remain in the AT, and we now see like the video testaments to that. Oh yeah, like, it's uh, like they, you know, it's people are trying to get to the top, and yeah, that makes sense. You know, yeah. I'm I'm grateful for every subscriber I've gotten just doing this silly shit. You know, because <laughs> a lot of people can't say that. It's like I, I, like you know, people. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about you know being a Gundam YouTuber for a little bit, right? Sure thing. Uh, yeah. So it, it's it's related. Don't worry. Uh, like the um, <laughs> like there are other content creators in like on this platform that I have seen. I'm not gonna name names or anything like that because that's not what I do. Um, it's like either they will stick to what they know because you know Gundam fans they they really like of course informative content. They I've love seen those uh, top ten Gundam games which are like. Okay, here's the thing. I'm gonna go look up an article real quick. <laughs> and most of those are just okay. Oh, yeah. Here's the thing: free classics on PS2, then some last gen stuff. <laughs> like, yeah, those those get repetitive real quick. Yeah, it's like people like Gundam fans really like informative content. Like, I I feel I count myself extremely lucky that I was able to make it anywhere in the space and get my name spread around at all with doing this silly shit. Uh, I, I consider myself very lucky because Gundam Gundam game videos that, you know, just play it really straight, you know, they just talk about the game and it's like, oh yeah, I, I love this game, it's great. Like, they, they get a lot of views and for good reason too. That's that's what people want to hear. They want to hear Gundam game good. I, I talked about this in um in the Encounters in Space video. Yeah, like, like... It's its own video. I can't really begrudge people for wanting belly rubs, but... Yeah, it's like, I mean, everybody wants to hear that their favorite thing yeah. is good, right? Everybody. It's like, uh... Like if, any, like, if anyone tells me that High Guardian Spice is bad, I'll just kill them uh, in, a, in Minecraft. But, like... Oh, no. Like, it's literal... <laughs> just kidding. But, <laughs> it, it, like, but, yeah, you know, it's just... But if somebody doesn't say that, they, they're, like, they, they you know, they, they bear their fangs. It, in, in my experience with Gundam game, you know, player people. Uh, it's the, um, that's the thing with cliques and stuff. Uh, yeah, it's definitely that's I, the thing with niches. If if somebody gets into a niche and they're new at it, because it you know it's like, like I'll I'll just say it, I'm not the biggest Gundam fan out there. I'm not. Uh, I think I've always you know I think I've always been pretty uh open about that. But you know the people who are the big Gundam fans who who know the lingo, who know the talk, you know who know the trade, as it were. They are you know they're they're preferred. They're preferred creators in the space. Obviously that that just goes without saying. Um, especially if, you know, if you do Gunpla, if you do, um, like if you cover Japanese games, if you, like, if you, like, if you nail that niche down, like it's, it's, it's great. You, you will, you will like, uh, prosper in this space, I feel like. Uh, but... And, hmm? I don't know, uh, I just, yeah, I guess a thought occurred to me, like, I'd say that I'm, like, when it comes to me, I'm in a very, in a fairly interesting place. As a guy who does, you know, Gundam video videos, is you know, mm -hmm. people tend to bunch everyone into like centralized and all in all encompassing, I'd say, uppercase C communities and uppercase C fandoms and uh, things of that nature. But I don't, I personally don't really 
consider myself a part of, I guess, any sort of fandom or community. Not out of, like, ire for fans or something, but I am the type of person that I... I don't really... I suppose the best word for it would be... Would be I don't particularly consent to being superficially grouped with others. It's like, no, nope, I mean, I'm yeah, just nobody, nobody in my corner and uh, I'm doing my thing. If, if people like uh, what I work on, then... Yeah, sure, they can stop by, but I'm, uh, I certainly won't, uh, you know, well. Uh, yeah, and that's I the beautiful guess. thing about about having the hobby, right? Like, being in the hobby yeah. mindset. Yeah, uh, like, like, regardless of how, of how centralized those, like, clay networks are, you know, the hobby itself is, uh, it's pretty decentralized, and you can, uh, you can do just about anything in your patch of land. Absolutely. It's like that's um, like that's that's kind of the thing that I, I it's you know it, it is interesting because it's I wouldn't say it's necessarily a hobby for me like it is a hobby of course, um, but it's also like you know when you aspire to grow, uh, that mindset is it, it could get a little toxic like I wouldn't wish it on anyone, <laughs> Which one? like the the you know the you know like oh man I like I'm making Gundam videos. And people expect this the next time, so I'm gonna do this thing next time. And oh, they like this thing now, so so I got to do it again. So it becomes like a chasing the high kind of thing. That that's what I found myself falling into when oh. I started to prioritize growth. I think it's called. Uh, I think there's a name too, like that phenomenon. I think yeah, uh, mental audience... illness. <laughs> I was about to say uh, <laughs> audience capture. Like that's, yeah, audience uh, capture, uh, demographic targeting, you know, it, it's like they, that, it's yeah. like, that, that is a, like, I won't say it's a bad thing to do, but uh, it definitely was a, it was a, it, it, it becomes toxic if you yeah, let it's, it. It's one of those things that if, uh, if you're, if you're like, uh, you know, don't, uh, don't watch it, then, you know, it, you get pigeonholed and that's, that's no good. Yeah, I, I think I have definitely gotten pigeonholed a hundred percent. It's like, you know, no problem, but you know, like, I, like I said earlier, uh, you know, like you, you grow up, you get out of things and you know, it's like, so as far as Gundam content, I've, I've, I've cultivated this fan, fan base, God, so dumb. <laughs> um, I, I've cultivated a group of viewers, let's call them a group of viewers <laughs> who, who really, really like Gundam stuff. So if I get away from that. And this happens with anyone who does this. Um, if you get away from that, either they stay or they go to greener pastures. Who's doing the thing that they that they want, and that that is a risk, definitely. So for someone who's 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 a hobbyist who doesn't prioritize growth or who doesn't um, who doesn't really care about growing, which is a really good position to be in, um, if that's just what you want to do, if you just want to do stuff, I, I think that's a great position to be in on YouTube. Like I think trying to grow is is like oof, yeah, scary. Definitely. First of all. Um, like, I just think it's a good spot. I think it's a very good spot because that means that you can literally do whatever. And whether you get hate comments or whether you get like, you know, threats because you said like, oh, this mono Y is better than that mono Y and oh, the Zaku this, blah, 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 blah. Like it, none of that shit matters because like, like who are they? Because even then, even as a hobbyist, you're doing million times more than the people who will leave hate on stuff and people who leave like, you know, nasty comments and it's like, shit that uh, just doesn't make any you know, sense. We're all basically internet randos, and, you know, it's no sense in, you know, getting on someone else's case for arbitrary shit like that. Definitely. Yeah, like like we like we say, the the internet is not a real place. <laughs> like, yeah. And these people are not real either. They're basically Oblivion NPCs. They just, they're just programmed to say like, dumb shit. I, and... I love that uh, Dave Chappelle quote. I don't give a fuck because Twitter's not a real place. It is not a real place. And and that's the thing. It's like people do treat it like a real place. But those people are typically not living in the real world, they, uh, uh, even in their IRL lives. So it's they, just, you know, you could just you could just rest easy knowing that you are just better than some people. Uh, <laughs> you can dab on the silly beliefs. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But... Yes, but it's like as far as content creation goes, um, even even though you know you're just kind of you know doing your little things, you know you know doing your little silly <laughs> edits and stuff like that. I am pretty happy to see um, where you go next, because honestly, with with your style of delivery, you could you could do anything, <laughs> and you could still have your you could still have your up and ups. You could still have your you know 
your your passion projects related to Gundam, but I, I feel like your delivery is is good for a lot of stuff. I feel like your humor is really good for a lot of stuff. And you could you could build uh something crazy just by just by doing just by doing what you want to do. And I think that that's I think that's a super important thing to stress. Like you you doing what you want to do, people will follow. It's it's just you just gotta make things. I always tell people just, yeah, just make, just make things. things. That's that, yes. that's definitely uh yeah, that, that is a really good piece of advice. Like that's uh, that's what I th uh, I tell other people. That's what other people tell me. Uh, it's like you know, there's there's definitely been like uh, all sorts of like guys to be a YouTube channel, guys to be a Twitch streamer, where you know you get like uh, do this and this to maximize engagement. Get this mm -hmm. stock uh, uh, stock avatar from this site, and you'll ha you'll have your professional gaming Twitch channel. And uh, that's that's where you get like, and the these, reality uh, many and the reality that is burn out within a month. Yeah, it's like you. It's like the reality is is that if you can have the best setup ever, 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 but that only brings in people who are like, "Wow, this editing, this setup is so good for a really small channel like yours," and then you never see them again. It's like. <laughs> it's yep. like the it's like it's crazy it's like just just make good stuff and you know people will subscribe off of that like yeah pretty much like i wouldn't i wouldn't put my all i wouldn't put all my eggs into one basket or for any of that stuff like i would make sure that my content is good before anything yeah like admittedly like uh, one of my uh i guess guilty pleasure hobbies is uh is looking at internet train wrecks like uh you know the old oh, Chandler you, boy, for internet, example. I'm like, are you an internet drama? No, uh, I, Internet drama aficionado? Not really. Like, I don't particularly care for the minute stuff. I... I look at, like, complete colossal and other shit shows. Like, you know, Chandler boy, like, uh, the tale of, uh... Old, you know, like, you have the... Uh, the Worski shit show from way back then. Oh, got, uh, wait, like... and, wait, you mean Andy Worski? Oh yeah, that one time when he tried to get uh, <laughs> Carl Benjamin on and he, he he banked on that so hard and he fumbled or, you know, things like uh, the you know, escapades of uh, of the channel awesome. That, that in of itself is oh, God. like, hey, yeah. like, thank God for uh, for Mr. Medicare, you know, Jim. Oh, yeah. World's I'm, funniest I'm cancer patient. For like See, documenting and that's, and that's the and thing all about, that stuff, because and that's the thing about Mr. Medica, right? I, you know, because you know, I grew up like on 4chan and shit like that, right? <laughs> like, and I grew up on, I definitely grew up on that kind of stuff, right? And you know, like nowadays, I probably wouldn't agree. Well, I probably don't, and I'm, I'm sure I don't agree with a lot of the things that Medica says in relation to like, you know, certain, like, you know, certain, you know, culture related topics. Um, that's perfectly fine. I mean, I, I do believe yeah. in my stuff. You, you believe in yours. I don't, you know, I don't particularly feel the need to pry into that. If, uh... Oh yeah, for sure. I, it's like, it's whatever. But, uh, yeah, it's like, but I do, I do still like, you know, acknowledge that, you know, some people have something to say, like, even if they're, even if they're not necessarily talking about the things that I believe in, you know, like, you know, yeah, I, I, you know look, that whole I, thing about like a broken clock can be right twice a day and stuff like that. I, like, I, I feel like, like people, like people are, people have things to say even if like our beliefs don't align and shit like that. Yeah, I'm, like I, I believe in the value of having a conversation yeah, about same. things. But yeah, back on to back to the like uh, I guess the topic at large of like <laughs> seeing like mm -hmm. all sorts of internet insanity. I, I like I like looking at the sorted internet insanity because. Part of it is like seeing uh, all sorts of like both cautionary tales and things that oh, yeah. you know. Like one part is definitely looking at uh, people who have fumbled worse than uh, worse than I did and such. Yeah, so I, which, I like, always employ I like I always employ the point and laugh oh, strategy. Yeah. The point and I, laugh. Like yes. That, yeah, it's like, like when you go like stuff. when you grow up on the internet, you learn to laugh at this crazy shit that happens. Yeah. And. That's why I love and myself like, some internet insanity. Oh yeah, I, I do. I, I am a fan of crazy internet stuff, but I always make a point to not get like yeah. heavily invested in like getting mad on behalf of other people. Oh yeah, because that I don't thing. like I don't know these people. You know, it, it's so, like a zoo. Like you don't interact with the rabbit animals. Like you yeah. um yeah, you yeah. just look from afar. That kind of thing. That's too. 
also, you know, like that's, it's not... <laughs> that's why I don't ever comment on Twitter, holy shit. It's also, you know, not particularly healthy to, uh, you know, uh, to, like, keep certain things and people in one's head rent-free. Mm-hmm. Yes, I, like, I uh... make sure that I never... The only way that I want to be in somebody's head rent-free is if I piss them off or if they're, like, <laughs> obsessed with me. That's it. <laughs> Like I aspire to make to make a cult full of believers <laughs> that that I'm a that I'm a funny person. <laughs> <laughs> but that's about it. I see. So it appears that uh, <laughs> that your next plan for the channel is to create the Kinsey create cult. A cult. Yes. Kin yes. Oh, create yeah. a cult. <laughs> That's so bad. Yes, a, a kid's a cult. A cult with a K. <laughs> you gotta love yes, that that's, that's alliteration. Why I, that's why I call them, yeah, that's why I call them the, uh, the cute bitches, because, you know, everyone's cute, you know, um, because obviously, I think it's very obvious from the, the content that I make, I'm, I'm a pretty open person, uh, to all walks of life. I don't, I don't really care, like, you know, what you believe in. I don't care how masculine you think you are uh like whatever right like you you're always a cute bitch if you're watching me <laughs> and like i just i just want people to to just lay off you know i just want people to lay off a little bit yeah just, people should just chill. Be, be vulnerable people yeah just be vulnerable and just be a cute bitch like you can be the most ma muscular like triple h looking ass and you're still a cute bitch you know it takes a real man to be best girl <laughs> that, and that's what i and that's what i go into this whole thing with that's my that's what i want people to know is that like you're a cute bitch if you're watching me and take that with you wherever you go it's like just be just be a little bit of a cute bitch like i don't i don't care if you're this or that i don't care if you're like you know like like i gotta like, step you know, up my like, game on that because <laughs> like look i i don't have the sufficient alliteration to create like a posse of uh of aficionados <laughs> of uh of a jackass on the internet who carries the name of the shirt lad <laughs> yeah i mean hey that stuff kind of just comes with time like i like i didn't really it's like the only reason why i say cute bitches is because like all throughout high school and everything i would just call i just call things cute like if i got good grades or some shit like i would tell my teachers like oh these grades are cute <laughs> and then they'd be like what <laughs> it, it was just like yeah i got an a it's like that's a cute grade it's like if it's a B, it's not as cute. C, not not very cute at all. D is ugly. Blah blah blah. blah. Like it's just that stuff just kind of follows. Like a lot of stuff from my real life goes into what I make. Like my life experiences, all that shit. <laughs> and like, like I don't know. Life life is tragic, so I turn it into content. <laughs> Ain't that what Charlie Chaplin said? <laughs> shit, probably. <laughs> like I feel like that's the best way to do it. It's like turn your suffering into content. And then the rest will follow. Now five thousand people get to <laughs> get to hear about like you know like how big Lorenz cock is, and, like <laughs> it, like how like it just just a bunch of stuff, right? Uh, yeah, that's that's essentially it. Yeah, it's like I mean, hey, you, you wanted to pick my brain, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I got all that and then some. Mm -hmm. That's all you're gonna get me. And definitely Are some, you? uh, some bit of the moon, uh, of the, well, I guess, technically, uh, Lauren would be a guy from the moon, so. <laughs> I, I almost said moon <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, uh, Mr. Rotate today is definitely a yes. cool feller. Definitely hot, hot feller, <laughs> if you ask me. Of course. But yeah, uh, I guess, um, like we, we talked about, you know, internet goings ons and things like that. I'm sure we're pretty, uh, pretty much on the same page. I think we both enjoy a little bit of internet hilarity. Yeah. Uh, did you have any, did you have any questions for me related to that whole kind of thing or no, did you want to move on? To that was just a side note, you know, main, mainly it's like, I wanted to, uh, which I didn't <laughs> manage to, uh, do, uh, to kind of, you know, steer it towards the, like. You know, all these, like, I guess, fad eras where, you know, uh, for a while, yeah, there used to be cha uh, channel awesome stuff where everyone wanted to be a VGN, where everyone wanted to be nostalgia critic, where, they, <laughs> mm -hmm. where everybody uh, 
uh, tried, you know, having these uh, subplots about their evil clones trying to kill them, about finding the <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. fucking aluminium uh, covered uh, Terminator skeletons from Walmart. <laughs> then, then of course he got the he had the let's plays, and for a while uh, YouTube was flooded with the fairly soulless, uh, you know, uh, SEO filling. Uh, clickbait videos like oh my this yeah. is a uh, this is a secret robot inside Fortnite uh, oh yeah that garbage yeah yeah and so, and it's like yeah and I do employ a certain level of clickbait I, I do <laughs> but I think my clickbait is very honest I, I just I just like making my titles more clickable not necessarily changing what the titles are like they, um, I like, like them you know, like they, 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 accessible clickbait they are like very very shit posty like yeah, these games sure. ruined my life. Not yes. <laughs> like, uh, uh. They're definitely like on the more fun side. I think once uh, I think the opposite of it is when you know making video turns into basically the content mill we all know and despise. But yeah, I suppose that's uh, that does it for uh, closing notes on my part. Is there anything you might want to add, or uh, can I just get to the outros? I mean, it's up to you. Uh, I mean, hey, we've covered a lot today, um, on and off the air. I think um, I, uh, talking to you was really, really interesting, super eye-opening. <laughs> uh, it's it's a different thing, you know, talking to people, you know, like, you know, through text and, you know, seeing them talk through videos, but it's an entirely different thing talking to them uh, in a call or, you know, things like that, right? And even though the odds of us meeting face to face are very, 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 very low, uh, yeah. I, I feel like I feel like talking on a call was really was really eye opening. Like I love talking to people who make videos. I love it. Like like I'm talking like some like fucking content guru, but like I said, I'm nobody. <laughs> but I, I like I like talking to people who have the same interest in making silly videos like I do. It's it's a really fun thing for me to do, and I'm glad I got to talk to you. So yeah. Yeah, been so that's, that's my that's my ending statement. <laughs> yeah, been the uh the fellow uh fellow internet nobody myself. I'm I'm honored <laughs> I could have you on. And Absolutely. with that being said, shortly signing out. Do you have a right, do you have your yeah, you got your outro. Great. Mm -hmm. <laughs>